to you to the first in a series of events exploring the ways that we as a community of artists and as members of a broader society have responded and will continue to respond to events that have shaken and reshaped the national conversation as it relates to race and equality in the United States. My name is Kevin Forty. I'm the Director of Residence Life here at the Rhode Island School of Design. Before we begin our discussion, discussion let us remember how we arrived here tonight. On July 17th of last year, Eric Gardner died in Staten Island, New York, after being placed in a chokehold by police officers attempting to detain him. Cell phone video of the event showed Eric Gardner telling officers, I can't breathe while lying <coughs> face down on the ground. He died shortly after the incident while in transport to a hospital. On August 9th, Michael Brown was involved in a confrontation with a, with a Ferguson, Missouri police officer following a reported robbery at a nearby convenience store. Twelve bullets were fired during the altercation, six of which struck and ultimately killed Michael Brown. Racial divide in the United States began long before any European settlers ever stepped foot on these lands, and has evolved and devolved throughout history. 152 years after Abraham Lincoln issued the Emancipation Proclamation, the U.S. remained burdened by its heritage of chattel slavery dating back to the early 16th century. In the decades following the height of the African American Civil Rights Movement, the U.S. has experienced positive advances in racial equality and also many setbacks. Milestones such as the election of Barack Obama, the first black president of the United States, have stood in contrast to troubling legislature, such as Florida's standard ground law used to defense against the killings of Trayvon Martin and Jordan Davis. Americans have watched the Supreme Court strike down Section 4 of the Voting Rights Act in 1965 and seen systemic disenfranchisement of minority voters in recent elections. Incidents of oppression and exclusion are backdrop by unemployment rates of black <coughs> Americans that are twice those of the rates of white Americans, and by long-standing economic inequality that finds more than 25% of black Americans living below the national poverty level. The death of Eric Gardner and Michael Brown were in many ways a tipping point of unrest that began long before the tragic events themselves. In Ferguson, news of the shooting spread quickly. Memorials were laid and vigils began within hours. A hostile and aggressive police response fanned flames of community outrage and civil protest accelerated rapidly in the small city and beyond. Peaceful protests became disorderly. Disorder turned to looting, and looting turned to violence and arson. Despite curfews and calls for peace, for weeks the world watched in disbelief as media images of police officers in riot gear exchanged fire, tear gas, rubber bullets, smoke bombs, and flash grenades with protesters armed with ball top cocktails, weapons, and makeshift projectiles. War zone like imagery from every town in the USA. <coughs> Hope that answers and justice would emerge from the legal system extinguished on November 24th and December 3rd, when two separate grand juries in Ferguson and New York failed to indict the police officers involved in either Michael Brown or Eric Garner's deaths. Following both decisions, protests erupted from coast to coast and beyond. On November 25th, hundreds, of prote hundreds protesting the decision stopped traffic on Route 95 in Providence. On December 5th, a similar shutdown of the Massachusetts Turnpike occurred as thousands in Boston took to the streets in a show of solidarity. Not all protests have been peaceful. On December 20th, two New York City police officers were killed in the line of duty by a gunman vowing revenge for the deaths of Michael Brown and Eric Gardner, furthering a divide between those on both sides who champion peace, compassion, and unity, and those who accuse and generalize blame. These tragedies have brought deep-rooted issues of racial micro and macro aggressions, social justice, police violence, and economic and systemic inequalities to the forefront of the American conscience. Like the communities of Selma, Birmingham, Montgomery, Greensboro, Little Rock, and many others before, Ferguson has become synonymous with a movement, with a struggle to continue the fight for equality in America. Like the civil rights movement of the 1950s and 60s sought to correct the failures of post-Civil War Reconstruction, some believe Ferguson to be part of a modern effort to correct systemic injustices that our most recent civil rights movement could not. Immediately following the Ferguson grand jury decision in November, many RISD students and staff offered their support in planning of a thoughtful response to what I consider a cultural call to action. Many in this room have answered that call and have worked 
diligently to ensure that what opportunities Ferguson does afford us as a society, the opportunity to learn, to understand, to exercise compassion, and to prevent its tragic recurrence are not lost on this community. Tonight, tomorrow, and in many events to come, our RISD community will be reflecting and engaging in expression and making in, and in dialogue about what Ferguson has meant to us, what it means to us today, and what it means to us tomorrow. One member of the RISD community who offered her immediate support in this effort has asked to say a few words before beginning our discussion. Please join me in welcoming President Roseanne Summerson to the stage. involved with planning tonight's events to please stand for a moment because there was quite a there were quite a number of you involved in getting us to your tent. So if you could just take a minute and stand. And let's all please <laughs> Thank you. And I'm particularly moved by the fact that these events tonight are happening in the School of Art Design. And it's important to us, I think, to recognize that since the beginning of time, artists have expressed both the values and the ideals of their cultures through their work. Artists and designers have helped to define and shape revolutions to express visually or through nonverbal means what can be difficult or painful to say in other ways. Our community here is a very special one, one that fosters a deep belief in social justice in celebrating difference, and in our responsibility to act. I am so moved by the fact that our community is one that does not sit still or passively accept what outrages them. In this spirit, I applaud you all for being here tonight to be proactive agents of change, to question and to draw attention to how things are, and to act to make them better. So please join me in welcoming our panelists and our speakers for what I hope will be a very lively and important conversation tonight. Thank you. Uh, at this time, I'd like to uh, introduce tonight's moderators, uh, Yulitsa John Charles and Mariah Patton. Good evening. My name is Jim Vincent. I'm the president of the NAACP Congress Branch. I'm also the Civil Rights Officer for RIPTA. I'm also the uh, host and producer of my own show, the Jim Vincent Show on CW28. Um, I've been involved with the NAACP for the last 10 years here in Rhode Island. Before that, I was involved with the Urban League of Rhode Island. Uh, I think 15 years ago, I was the president of the Urban League. So all together, I've been involved in civil rights here in Rhode Island for 20 years. I'm originally from Boston and uh, came here in 1990 to work uh, in, as a housing director for the city of East Providence. So I'm, I'm glad to be here, and I think this is going to be an important forum. Hi, so that's the one to Hi, I'm John Key. I am an alumni here, graduating in 2013 in graphic design. Um, I'm originally um, from Alabama, and now I live in New York, where it has an art director, designer, and advertising agency. 
Um, and I'm an artist, and I'm here with Jess, and we're going to talk about artists against police violence, um, which is a platform that we started. So, Jess. Well, my name is Jess Chen. And in 2013, um, I'm the alumni, I'm and I'm also a spoken word poet. I'm based in Brooklyn, New York right now, and um, me and John Key started like, Artists Against Police Violence, um, mostly because we wanted to create a space for like, talk for like black artists and artists of color to feel safe and responding to the events of Ferguson. Hi, um, I'm Stephen Roberts. I'm uh, originally from Connecticut, but I graduated from Rick in 2014, and I've been getting involved with local activism in the area. I helped found, well, not help, but I was a part of creating um, M Police Brutality PVD, which is a collective, a collective of people who have anti-authoritarian uh, anarchist leaning beliefs who are who happen to be uh, people of color who also um, are against state oppression through the use of police and other military militarized units. Uh, that's basically it. 